Geopol and brand leadership have teamed up to scour 85 countries on the continent to find their third list of Africa's best brands. One of the most surprising trends on the list is the fact that the list is dominated by non-African brands. Joining me in studio for this and more is Tebe Ikalafeng, his founder and chairman of Brand Africa, and Patricia Kithua. She is the vice president responsible for commercial sales at Africa Geopol. Welcome to you both. It's lovely to have you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. I, I, I want to start off by this shocker insight that uh, we've just surfaced here, that the list is topped by non-African brands. How has this happened? Well, you know, it's been, uh, it's been a trend over the week. We've done the survey since 20, uh, 2011, and, it, and between 2011 and now, we've done seven, uh, seven surveys. And uh, throughout, uh, the average has been about 20% of the brands that Africans admire, are Afri or only 20% of the brands that Africans admire are African. So it's a bit, a bit of a challenge for us, because and this year's gone, this year's the lowest has been at 14% of the brands that Africans admire are, are, are mm -hmm. African. So it means there's 86% dominance by, by non-African brands. I think it's happened because, um, uh, the, the, domi the global brands have got legacy, they've mm -hmm. been around longer, they've got history, uh, they've got the resources, they've got the know-how, and they've got the economies of scale. Mm. And we are only now just getting into this business. But I mean, we've got MTN, we've got Damgote, we've got Safari Home, uh, who are doing well in this space already. But it's an all-time low, uh, Patricia. The, sh it, the trajectory doesn't show, doesn't seem to indicate that African brands are doing enough to be top and center and to be top of mind in, in, in the minds of African consumers? Actually, African brands need to do a bit more market research to find out exactly what consumers' needs are. Yeah. Because when they develop products, they need to involve the consumers so that they can be able to meet a need and actually you know, solve a problem that is actually there. All right, so let's, let's take a look at some of the highlights sitting on top of the leaderboard. So can you give me a sense of the movers and the shakers, uh, the brands worth talking about that have come through in this particular year? Well, um, if you look at the top 100 uh, spontaneously recalled brands, uh, Nike is number one. Uh, Nike has been number one last year and they're back again as, as, as number one this year. Uh, and if you look at uh, within that list, if you look at what is the top uh, African brand on that list, and that'll be MTN. Mm. Uh, MTN is back again. Uh, they were sixth last year, the eighth this year. So a, sl a slight uh, matter of fact, when you look at all the African brands, most of them have declined uh, by a couple of points or so. So you've got MTN at top, you've got uh, Dango uh, Dangote, Dangote. Mm -hmm. and you've got Anbesa from Ethiopia. So those are, uh, are the, uh, the top three brands uh, within the uh, within the top 100 brands but in, and then what we all what we do further we do as a survey within the survey we then ask a specific question what is your most admired financial services brand right and so you uh, go by sector now we go by sector now. Yes. And, but we only look at two sectors mm -hmm. and in that sector ecobank is number one and we come to media bbc number one <laughs> you did not just say this uh, while sitting on the cnbc oh africa no, desk such a mess. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but you know what uh, the interesting thing is that uh, when we do the survey we also we, we look at the spontaneous recall, and that's MTN from Africa. Yeah. But when we prompt the question, when we say, tell me your most admired African brand, yeah. Dangote is number one mm. brand. Uh, because Dangote is a, a known brand, a known person. There's an mm. association between yeah. the person, the brand, and the entrepreneurship. So it's quite an interesting uh, uh, um, uh, outcome there. But it's been the same for the, for the last two years. So the two really dominant African brands, mm. Dangote and MTN. I was quite surprised uh, by Fila. And, and, I, and I realized when I was looking at the list that the reason I'm surprised by Fila is maybe because I'm old. Because the people who are <laughs> now wearing the Fila brand, it's almost, uh, it's making a comeback through a much younger market and a much younger consumer. Was that a surprise for you at all? Uh, actually, no, because we've seen this uh, sport and fitness brands coming up. Ah. So we have Fila, we have Puma there, we have Nike. And the newest entrant was actually USA Vans that came in. So mm. when we see this entrance of sports and fitness brands coming in, last year we had the World Cup, which sometimes drives people to start thinking, okay, I need to be a bit more sporty. So we find them actually admiring such brands. Mm. So beyond financial services, beyond uh, sportswear coming back, what is the other sector that you do a little bit of a di uh, deep dive into? Well, what we then, when we look at the survey, uh, our surprisingly luxury brands were 10% of the, of, of the list. Luxury so, brands, So you right? look at, and when I say luxury brand, you know, I'm talking Louis Vuitton, Versace, uh, Rolex, and all those. I'm like, Rolex? Versace, Louis Vuitton on the list mm. in this continent. But it's what they admire what they aspire to get if they can get them. And, but when you look across the continent and you look across the continent, you know, 
and I've been to every single mm. country in the continent and I've observed this, uh, you know, as I've been walking around, uh, that people are wearing Louis Vuitton, they're wearing Rolex, they're wearing Versace. They may not be the real thing, yeah. but they are wearing them because that's what they aspire to have. Right. So, uh, so that's what you begin to see. I think what you see, what the list reflects, it reflects um, the reality as well as the aspiration right. of African consumers. And the opportunity, Patricia, I would mm -hmm. say that, right? Because from what Tebe I is saying, I'm, I'm getting the sense that there's a huge huge opportunity for luxury brands on the African continent. Yes, we've got the likes of Luminance and some, but are, are we able to see other opportunities that are saying, well, why not an African brand and why is this dominated by a, a global brand instead? What we actually found is that consumers, uh, as you said, like luxurious brands, but then what happens is that you find that they think that they have a higher quality because they're international brands. But we're seeing that even local brands have quite high quality products. And Bessa, which came mm. up in the top three with high quality leather shoes. So we need to believe in African brands and actually also promote African brands. And, and, that's, and you're beginning to see now, you know, the brands like Amaklosa from yes. Amaklosa from here, from yeah. uh, from South Africa, uh, is a, a, a playing very strongly in the in, in, in the luxury sector. Yeah. And you're going to begin to see a lot of those type of brands, you know, whether it's ethnic by uh, ethnic by Tunde Olwabi from Nigeria. Right. Uh, so you begin to see those small brands uh, which are really rising in, and Africans, you know, being free now to to create. You know, I mean, look at the young men. 25 years yep. old with these tepo jeans uh, mm -hmm. uh, which are quite dominant during uh, 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 during the festivals in in, in December mm. uh, so you begin a global festival in, uh, a global festival in December and you begin to see that Africans are believing are begin, they, we've got the ability yep. we've got the consumer base uh, even the even the even the high net worth consumer base so what we need now we need to focus we need to invest we need to launch so I'm and I 100% agree with you, uh, Tebe, because you're going to need a far more focused, deliberate uh, intent around making sure that we are bolstering African brands. But there must be nuances that are coming from a regional perspective. Uh, what might be the picture in Southern Africa, I assume, might be different in West Africa, might be different in East Africa. Are there nuances in the trends at all? Well, I mean, 80 percent of the number one brand in every single African country, and we've done 25 countries. Remember, and those 25 countries represent 80 percent of the G of the population, and and, and about uh, 75 percent of the GDP. So it's really Africa, mm. uh, if you will. Mm. Uh, and if you look at all of them, even in every single one of those, the number one brand, 80 percent of them, the number one brand is uh, is, is is a non-African brand. Mm. Uh, so so. At, uh, the, the one key thing that we need to do as Africans is we really need to begin in, to begin to identify with who we are and to believe in ourselves and to support our brand because you know for some reason we be, we believe our brands are better if they are endorsed by an external person. Right. You know we've mm -hmm. got young brands like Isua uh, which yes. are which are standing very comfortably next to uh, Zara yeah. but with an African that segment uh, behind Afri that yes. correct with an yep, African yep. aesthetic. You know I heard a story that until until Beyonce wore. Whoa. Kisua. Kisua. <laughs> now, all of a sudden, people say, I must try Kisua. Yeah. Uh, because even Beyonce is wearing yeah. Kisua. Yeah. So, because we are looking for world, affirmation though. outside. But we're looking, for, we're looking for somebody outside of mm. Africa to tell us that it's good to be African. It's sure. always been good to be African. Well, I don't yes. think I can uh, wrap it up on a better note. It's always been good to be African. And this idea of constant validation by global faces uh, is probably one of the reasons uh, why we need to review uh, the strength of our African brands. That's Tebe Kalafeng. He's the founder and the chairman of Brand Africa and uh, joined by Patricia Kuthua, bringing her voice in. She's VP responsible for commercial sales at Africa Geopole.